نيو دالي تبنت هدفا واحدا واضحا فيما يخص العمل المناخي حيث تم الإعلان عن هدف طموح يتمثل بمضاعفة قدرات الطاقات المتجددة بثلاثة أضعاف وزيادة حجم الاستثمارات السنوية إلى أربعة تريليونات دولار بحلول عام 2030 بهدف الوصول إلى صافي صفر انبعاثات في عام 2050 فما هو موقف وكالة الطاقة المتجددة آيرينا من إعلان مجموعة العشرين؟ هذا هو السؤال الذي طرحته على المدير العام لايرينا فرانشيسكو لكاميرا. It's absolutely a very important milestone in the way towards COP28. We are naturally satisfied about it because the G20 has has taken our numbers and our call for triple the renewable energy installed capacity per year as a target, as a goal to be achieved. So I think that we are very satisfied with it. And again, is a very important step to work up 28. In some way, this uh, uh, call for the triple of renewable energy standard capacity is a way that the mitigation pillar in the work of the NFCC could be satisfactory uh, be, be taken. التمويل ذو الكلفة المنخفضة الموجه إلى الدول النامية أمر بالغ لأهمية دعم تحول الطاقة لدى هذه الدول وتعزيز جهودها لخفض الانبعاثات ولكن إلى أي درجة ساءت قدرة تلك الدول على الوصول إلى هذا التمويل في ظل ارتفاع أسعار الفائدة خلال العام ونصف الماضية؟ so, uh, naturally, uh, the, uh, high cost of finance for the country is a, a symptom more than illness. Mm. And this has to be taken into account because there are structural causes for that. And the G20 have uh, called for the four trillion of uh, investment per year is again, uh, one of the call of uh, ORINA, one of the number of our outlook. And that, that money has to be distributed in a way that uh, is uh, equally distributed between the, the global South and the, the, the global North. So we have to, to find the mechanism for making this happening and the COP28 will deal with it. سيد لاكاميرا مع اقترابنا من مؤتمر قمة المناخ كوب 28 في دبي برأيك ما هي الأمور التي يجب أن يتم تحقيقها خلال الأشهر المقبلة وما هي مخرجات القمة التي تأملون صدورها؟ uh, On the mitigation pillar, uh, we already said the triple could be, could be there. Hopefully this will be confirmed by, by, by the COP. All the, the the COP members, and uh, uh, I think what we need is also dealing with other area of uh, of uh, uh, that are on the on the discussion under discussion. I mean the loss and damage, I mean the financial uh, aspect of all of all of this. So all these are items that uh, the transfer of technologies, uh, the creation of uh, a fund for the loss and damage, so the finance for investment. All these aspects are are to be. And matured for decision and the final declaration of uh, the COP28. As you know, Arena is calling for a new narrative to be there, where we trying to overcome the structural barrier for the rapid deployment of renewables around the world, and especially in the global south. We say that the physical infrastructure is one of the main barrier. So the grids, the the, the way the grids are interconnected, mm. they are flexible, they are balanced but also the sea route, the sea trade, all these aspects should be considered as the legal, legal and policy environment, for example, for orienting the demand and also the institutional capacity to deal with the new energy system that is coming and the skill of workforce that is needed for making the investment be really implemented. المواد الحرجة أو critical materials تلك الضرورية لإنتاج الطاقات المتجددة ستكون عامل حسم خلال العقود المقبلة كيف ترى تأثيرها اليوم على الوضع الجيوسياسي عالميا؟ First of all, uh, critical materials are a matter of concern but they are not in the very brief period and uh, for the geopolitical aspects what uh, I wish to, uh, to mention is the fact that uh, the fact that the mineral are distributed also and especially in the global south, mm. this could be an opportunity through the manufacturing of the mineral inside. So what we are calling is that the industry of manufacturing the mineral remain in the place where this, uh, this mm. the mining will happen. And also the mining should be uh, happening in a way that is more sustainable, taking into account the human rights 
the young boy that are working in the mining sector and, uh, and uh, other aspects. And also, we can say that a circular economy, uh, re reducing the use of mineral, going for innovation, new technologies for having less mineral uh, to be needed. I think these all aspects that are uh, important on the geopolitical landscape. أخيرا سيد لاكاميرا نسمع عن ارتفاع كلفة تطوير مشاريع الطاقة المتجددة في الأشهر الأخيرة من ارتفاع كلفة التمويل مرورا بكلفة المواد كيف تحركت كلفة الطاقة المتجددة هذا العام وهل هناك فوارق بين مصادر الطاقة المتجددة المختلفة؟ First of all, it's difficult to believe but also in 2022 the renewable energy cost has been reducing, decreasing. Uh, this is really amazing. In after two years of raising price every everywhere in the world, we have assisted uh, for some technology like the offshore wind and the hydropower, a slight and more uh, substantial uh, incre uh, increase in uh, in the price. But these are just episode linked to to how to say the trend in some particular country. But generally speaking. We can say that again, also in 2022, the price of renewable energy cost has been decreasing. هذا مشاهدينا نصل إلى ختام هذه الحلقة من مستقبل الطاقة. تابعونا دائما على منصة X تحت وسم هاشتاج مستقبل الطاقة. إلى اللقاء.